Hi. In our last little quickie, we looked at producing a half ball, and I received many questions or comments about the fact that, well, why didn't we produce a full ball? Well, I think that's a very good comment. Uh, and why not? Well, we're going to do it now because I realize it's not something that's shown very often. So, I've, there's many ways of producing uh, balls on a lathe, uh, but I've chosen a method that I find is quite appropriate for home shop work. So, let's take a look at producing a complete ball on the lathe. So, my first end is done. I mean, I've rounded it off to three quarters of an inch in the last video. And now I want to do the second half. So, I've grooved it so that I have an overall length of three quarters of an inch. And now, if I round off the back end of it, well, I'll have a ball. But not really, because there's still that little nub, that end, that's holding this end onto the rest of the part. And we're going to want to cut that eventually and see how to round that off. And that is what we're going to be paying a lot of attention to. Because what I'm going to do now, which is rounding off most of the second end of this ball, well, I'm going to do in the same way that I did to get the ball on the part on the screw jack project that we saw that in the part two of the screw jack project video so if you want more details about this specific operation we'll take a look at that video for now let's get to it we'll blast through this partial rounding of the back end of the ball and it's going to be accurate because i'm going to be measuring as we go Okay, so the first half of the ball is complete. We did that in our last video. But we still have the second half to round off. Now I've produced a groove at three quarters of an inch, which is the overall length of the ball. So now all I have to do is round off the second side. But there's a problem with that. And that is that it's not difficult to round off most of the back. I'm going to do it with a file and measuring as I go with a micrometer to make certain that it's very accurate. But I'm going to end up with a nub on this at the end that I'm going to have to saw off. And how do I finish that small nub uh, accurately? And that's what we're really interested in here. Because what we're going to do now, well, is about the same as we saw on the screw jack project. So, I'm going to blast through this portion and then we'll come back with a lot more explanations on the second part of the second end of this ball, the one where I have to clean up that little spot because we want a ball here that has no drilled holes or no flats on it. So, let's take a look at that.
Now we can cut that almost complete ball off with our hacksaw and get to the really interesting part. And there, my ball is ready for finishing. We just have to come and take off the nub that was left by this sawing operation and our ball will be complete. So I have my almost complete ball. You want to see a great 3D effect? Oh, 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 almost complete. I just have that nub to take off and I'm going to want to hold it in the lathe because the technique I'm going to show you uh, really takes 98% of the material off on the lathe and it just leaves a very little bit of hand finishing to do and then we'll finish it all up with a good polishing but it's hard to hold a ball in a lathe well not really there's two ways of holding it well there's many many ways of holding it but there's two ways that are quite safe and easy to do and one is if you have a c5 collet now c5 collets I have one only in the shop and I use it on my little spin indexer, uh, but it's a one inch and my ball here is a three quarters. So I'm going to show it with uh, our eight collet, which is a milling machine collet. Okay, so if you insert your ball in the collet so that it's just half, just past halfway in, you can then clamp down on it and machine the end of the ball. Now this is an R8 and with R8 collets you can't use depth stops but if you have an R8 collet that has an internal th internally threaded rear and that again sounds painful well you can insert a depth stop into it and set your depth at just a little over half of the ball and that will position it just perfect when you set it in there. So that's one way of going about it. But not everyone, and I'm a good example of that, has a R8 collet, a C5 collet set kicking around their home shop. So what can we do? Well, we're going to use the second method, which is an easy method to do in the home shop, and that is to make, to machine yourself, a small fixture for holding this ball or any other ball depending on its size. So let's take a look, a 
closer look at the little fixture I've just made up. So here's my fixture. It's a two-parter. I have the main body and then the movable jaw. We'll call it that. Because we're going to be holding our ball like if we're holding it in a lathe vise. It's like a vise that I'm making from my lathe. So here's the main body. Important parts. Well, it's concentric. There's a small hole in the center that's really not important. It's just for clearance. And the top here has a V-shape. In my case, about 30 degrees. The back end, well, doesn't have a hole through it and that's not important, but it leaves my body a little more stiff for the three jaw that's going to hold it, or the four jaw. But important here is that I've turned down this end. And I've done it to produce a shoulder. Because I'm, when I'm going to insert this in my chuck, three or four jaw, well, the jaw is going to come and lean up against that shoulder. And that will lock this fixture in a very positive way in the three jaw or four jaw so that it doesn't slide back into the uh, lathe spindle. So that's important and the small V here at the head, about 30 degrees in this case, well is made to center the ball that I want to finish in that tool. Now the second part here is just a cylinder, okay, that's massive, there's not a hole through it with a flat end. And I want this end to be flat. I don't want a V-hole or any hole in there. And this back side of this anvil, I guess we can call it, well, has a 60 degree V to it. And that's important that it be accurate. I've produced this V with a center drill uh, because this is going to sit on my center, my center with the ball bearings that are in the tailstock. And that's going to hold this in place so that it can come then and lean up onto my ball and hold it into this fixture. Now, that might be a little complicated, complicated to see right now, but uh, let's go over to the lathe and take a look at it when it's set up. So, here's my little fixture. I'm going to insert it in the three-jaw chuck and tighten that down making sure that I'm well in contact here with the end of my jaws on that shoulder. Give it a good tight down. Now, this is a three-jaw chuck and it won't center this fixture perfectly. So what am I going to do? Well, I should have put it in a four-jaw if I want this V to be concentric and that's what I really want. But I don't feel like setting up a four-jaw and this is just brass. So I'm going to set it in my three-jaw not take it out again before I'm done with my part, but before I install the part in here, I'm just going to come and take a very light cut on that V with this small boring bar here uh, to ensure that the V is perfectly concentric with the axis of rotation. Let's take a look at that. So oh, now I can insert my ball, position my stop, bring them together, and clamp the ball down. There you go. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to come and position our cutting tool, which has a very small tool nose radius and is quite sharp. So we're going to come and position it to ten thousandths of an inch from the high spot somewhere on this ball, somewhere that has a good dimensional surface, so not where the nub is. We're going to be using a ten thousandths of an inch shim stock for that. Remember, off the high spot. And we don't want backlash to be a problem here. So we're going to be checking by moving the longitudinal axis frequently to make sure that where we're touching off 10 thousandths from the surface, we're actually on the high spot. And we're also going to be doing it by feeding the tool towards the part, keeping the backlash on this side. And that's important because we don't want to be backing up going forward and all that stuff. That will position us ten thousandths of an inch from the surface of the part. 
Then I'm going to back the tool off in the longitudinal axis and I'm going to set my cross line, the one I was moving in towards the part with, to zero on my graduated collar and that way I'll be able to come back to there if I have to. And I'll know that I'm 10 thou away on zero because then I'm going to take a cut. Then I'm going to return back to where I started, turn the part just slightly, take another cut, turn the part just slightly in the other direction, take another cut. So we'll be doing three cuts on that nub. Then we are going to advance the cross line about five thousandths of an inch and do another series of cuts. Then we're going to advance maybe three thousandths of an inch and take another series of cuts. At this point we'll be about two thousandths of an inch away from the finished surface of the ball. And at that point, well, it's really anyone's guess. We're going to have to go by eye and say, do I want to take another cut or am I just going to finish the rest off by hand? So let's get to there before we decide how we're going to finish it. Let's take those cuts. There, you can see that the nub is gone. Now what we need to do is a little bit of finishing. Well there you go, a nice three quarter of an inch ball. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, hit the like button. The objective of my videos, the reason why I do all of this, well is to help novice machinists. And the more novice machinists I reach, the better it is as far as I am concerned. So if you hit the like button, the more likes that I get, well, the more my videos will be seen. And remember, the next time that someone comes up to you and says, you ain't got no balls, well you go to your shop, you make yourself a set of these, you go back to that person and you tell them straight in the face, I got balls, I got balls of steel.
Now, to everyone out there, have fun, be safe, and happy machining.